Alexa, stop. Good day. The time is 5.05 a.m. <laughs> Anyway, I'm out here at the airport. I'm about 15 minutes early for my boarding, but I don't want to sit at the actual gate because I'm sure half of my company is going to be sitting there and it's too early to make a I'd rather talk to the camera than have to talk to my colleagues right now. So I'm going to chill here until boarding time and then we'll head on over. I did stop by Bambooza, which is in the north satellite. So near the end gates, right by N13. Uh, I used my priority pass, so I got this meal for free. I got a Thai iced tea and... Um, I think that's a honey glazed chicken vermicelli bowl and both this was like $28 and I had to compensate 8 cents which is kind of funny but that's gonna be my lunch on the flight. One thing that I am very upset about is that I don't think I'll have any time to visit museums because I'm only here for two full days. Um, today and Thursday are flying days so I'm leaving first thing in the morning and I found out that all the museums and stuff close by like 5 p.m. Like the latest one, is like 6, six so six, I, if I'm getting out of 5, so there's no way I'm going to hit these museums, so I'm kind of sad and we'll see what we can do. Today. Oh my god, we finally made it. It's about 6 p.m. We got off the plane, went straight to the hotel. I just checked in, just got the room, but uh, some of the peeps are gonna go get burgers, so I'm gonna join them and then we're gonna grab a quick bite and probably head back and then I'll do a room tour. Let's do a quick room tour. So this is the first thing when you walk in, you get this nice full-size mirror. I mean, a little mini closet for your coat racks and other things you need to hang. A little mini bar with, um, let's see. Let's see if they have some drinks in here. Obviously not complimentary. Nope. But I do get complimentary water. Um, here's the bathroom. Pretty good size actually. And walk into the room with a nice TV. Um, here's the bed. I want to say this is a king size bed, actually. And how do I get the lights on? I have no idea how to get the lights on, but we were lucky enough to get a view of the atrium. Yay! <laughs> I have no desire to see anybody, nor do I want anybody to see me, so I am trying my best to close all of these. Okay, I don't even know if that closed, but that, that's enough. I right, check this out. I got my name on here. How cool is that? I feel so special. Also, wow, I've never gotten designer shower goods from a hotel before. So this, I guess, has to be the best or the most luxe hotel I've been to to date. It's 9.45 p.m. at night, maybe a little later. Um, I came back from dinner around 7ish, a little past 7. And honestly, I'm not even that hungry. But I still have so much time left in the day. 
and if I can't go to all the museums to, in DC that I'm gonna sure as heck eat my way through DC. So earlier we went to um, Capitol Hill Burger or Capitol Burger, uh, it was something like that and it was really good. Um, apparently DC is known for their steakhouses and steak and beef in general and I will say the beef patty here definitely had like more meatiness, like more, it had a texture which when you're chewing it, it wasn't just like the ground beef that I was used to eating back home. So I guess the beef is a little more special here. Um, but I wanted to try local favorites. So I had to get Andy's pizza. I love pizza. I love New York pizza. So DC pizza can't be that much different, right? I don't know. I might get roasted in the comments. But I had to get Andy's pizza because I think this year was voted the best, or at least 2022 was voted best pizza in the area. And it comes on the list um, pretty often. So I had to give it a try. So obviously I had to get the plain slice because how can you judge a pizza if it's not a plain or pep? And I am not really into pep, so I had to get a plain and <laughs> this thing is huge! Just look at this! This thing is massive! So, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for this big piece right here. Look at this! Finger in my face! I got this for 25 bucks, which is honestly not bad because a lot of pizza these days, even with the chains, are pretty expensive. So let's go for it. Mmm. So since I got this delivered, it is a little bit cold, but tastes pretty good. The dough has a good chew. Mmm. I would say this definitely lives up to its reputation. I cannot say if it's the best pizza I've had though because I'm not eating it fresh like in its best condition. But for a cold pizza, hell yeah. And the sauce has a really good taste too. Mm. Some of you may be wondering what kind of business trip I'm on right now. Um, right now I'm in DC. I think I mentioned that earlier already. I'm in DC because I work for the federal government um, and my position is advanced management specialist. So what we do is we pretty much, as the name says, we manage a lot of federal grants. Um, I work for the Economic Development Administration so the EDA does economic development grants. So for example, when the COVID money came through, a lot of the money was set aside for small businesses and just for cities, um, anyone really that needed money to fund their programs or fund projects that would bolster the economy um, due to disasters or even if it's just like a population that's seeing outwards migration of jobs um, or uh, indigenous populations um, or coal communities, etc. So we manage all that money um, and I work for the Seattle Regional Office so we do um, pretty much like Idaho, all the way out to Micronesia. Uh, I think one of our co-workers live in Saipan, so we have quite a reach. I think we're the biggest regional office in terms of geography. Um, but we're here for the conference this week because it, in one hand, it's like an appreciation thing. Like, here's what we've done in the past two years since the COVID disaster. Um, thank you all for your hard work. And then on the other hand is like team bonding and also some workshops and training experiences um, that we haven't been able to do since joining the, the agency, at least a lot of us um, who joined during COVID. Most of you have probably already assumed that this trip is fully covered. It is, the agency is covering for everything on this trip within a budget, of course. So we get the hotel, we get the flights, we get like um, lifts, Ubers, taxis, we get food, any incidentals that we may incur on the trip that wasn't expected. And that is all completely covered by the agency. What's not covered is if, let's say I wanted to go to a museum and it wasn't free, I would have to pay for that out of pocket. So anything that you're doing outside of like necessity, you would have to cover. But it's my first time in DC. Um, my first impression so far, we walked around at least, um, I don't even know what this is called. We walked near the Apple store. That thing is insane. Like why is that Apple store so nice? I just went through my footage and I cut off after Apple store, but to finish my thought, I was just saying that the Apple store is really nice and it's ironic because there's a sign right outside that says like the historic district or historic building or something like that. I don't know what it said, but it implied that this was like some like really important place only for it to be occupied by Apple. And I don't know, that's just kind of sad to me. 
goals for the rest of the trip is to be able to visit as much tourist spots as I can. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to bike or walk or um, like scooter around the National Mall, but hopefully it won't be too bad so I can. If not, then we'll cross our fingers for Wednesday. Otherwise, I'm just going to be at a conference in a hotel all day. I'm trying to get some sleep now because I do have an early morning tomorrow and I'm just so pooped out from the day. So we'll tune back in 7 a.m. sharp. Good morning. It's 7.30 now. My hair is a mess. I don't know what happened to it yesterday after I showered, but it looks like that now. Um, I did wake up 30 minutes later than I planned, so I'm not going to go out to get breakfast. I'm going to get delivered to the hotel. I'm going to try the cracked eggery today. So that will be another local favorite we can add on to the list. And then for lunch, I'm not sure what the plan is. I'm not sure if I'm going with my coworkers or we're doing separate things, but I'm thinking either ramen because it's close by um, or I guess we'll see. So I waited a good 10 plus minutes down there because my order was arriving and never came and it was more just delivered. Problem is DoorDash needs 24 hours to investigate. I don't know what they need to investigate. I'm, it's, it's not even like I took the food and then half a day later was like it never came. I literally was like pretty punctual with their delivery times. I don't even mind that I didn't get the food because I'm honestly not hungry. I just wanted something in my stomach if we're going to be in the, this conference until like noon or so. But now not only am I short $20, I'm short 20 minutes that I could have slept in. Found a solution. Thank you, Andy's. I actually just got an email from um, DoorDash. They actually resolved it really fast, but instead of refunding my money to my card, they refunded me as DoorDash credit, which is kind of a scam. But I will be using DoorDash to deliver again, so it's okay. I do plan on getting the Federalist Pig barbecue delivered tomorrow. So tune in for that. I am so excited. I love barbecue, and there's not a big barbecue scene in Seattle, so I'm, I'm stoked. Also, this pizza is, I feel like it's better. The Asian in me also had to bring my own coffee, so I'm using this Maximum one. I don't remember the exact brand, but it's pretty tasty. I feel like for this size cup though, I'm gonna need two packets. Here's my outfit for the day. I'm all suited up and I have five minutes to run to the conference, so I'll see y'all there. <laughs> Back for a quick update. Uh, we just finished the conference. It's almost 5.30. Oh, but I am off to Le Diplomat. Um, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. It's French, but I think I think I did a pretty good job. Anyways, I had to make reservations for this place. I wasn't even sure I was going to get in with all the conferences. And I heard that this was the restaurant like of DC. This is where you run into like the president and, and uh, the, the vice president having brunch together on a random Wednesday. So I'm going there and I'm gonna go with Diana, my coworker, so we should be having a good time. now 9 30 p.m we finished the conference around 5 10 ish and then i went off to get dinner at la diplomat and it was delicious i mean i got the warm shrimp salad and the french onion soup and those were fairly affordable for the type of restaurant that it was which is like this elevated like french cuisine place um and I think in total I spent $55 after tax and tip, which I think for a fancy restaurant is very reasonable. So I'd say if you're in DC, give it a try, make your own judgments. You know, don't let me 
don't let the internet decide for you. I mean, you can't come to DC and not go to Diplomat. So go there and the neighborhood is super cute. Um, and then after that, um, Diana and I went on a bike ride and that was so fun and we really needed it to work off all that food. Um, so we biked all the way to the, uh, oh my God, what is it called? The Washington Monument. And then from there we biked to the Lincoln Memorial and then we biked backwards towards the Washington Monument again to get towards to the White House. So then we biked to the White House which is a lot smaller than it, it seems on camera, by the way. <laughs> and then all the way back. So we found out that the White House was only four minutes away from our hotel, which is crazy because it just feels like so far, but on a bike, you can get anywhere. Um, but I'm about to end up my night. Hopefully I can fall asleep earlier because we have another early morning. I'm trying to at least go to um, Tate uh, Cafe and Bakery tomorrow morning before the meeting because it's also one of the spots on my list that I want to go. For lunch today, we actually got Thai, which for some reason my camera deleted itself. I swear that I recorded it, but for some reason it's not on my footage. So um, we went to a Thai place because it was close by um, and the ramen place that I wanted to go to, I think it's called Daikaya. It was actually closed today, so we couldn't go there. Um, tomorrow, I'm hoping to, I haven't decided yet. Um, I want to really try, uh, what is it? finalist pig at the barbecue place so I don't know if I'm gonna do that for lunch or if I'm gonna do it for dinner but I think I might lean towards doing it for lunch because we might all want to meet up and do dinner tomorrow so I don't want to you know force everyone to go where I want to go so just in the case that um, the options for dinner tomorrow is not you know one of the places I want to go to let's do federalist pig for lunch so I think I'm gonna have to get it delivered oh I don't know I don't know because it's just more easy <sighs> My problem is, you know, when the conference wraps for lunch, you're, you're still all hanging out and everyone's like, what are you doing for lunch? What are you doing? And then everyone's, everyone wants to do, you know, their thing. Maybe, maybe for lunch, I'll pitch ramen again. I'll pitch ramen and then for dinner, I'll get Federalist Pig delivered or I'll go there myself. I don't know. We'll see. That's the plan. Other than that, good night. I will see you all tomorrow. Ah! I'm so excited i just got lunch for the day um i have to take a call so i'm doing lunch upstairs alone in my room but ah! if y'all remember i said i wanted to get federalist oh i cannot say that word federalist pig um it's a local barbecue joint and it is very well known around the area so of course i have to try because i am a carnivore let's do an unboxing um i got the sampler platter which comes with three meats to try i did the fatty biscuit or the juicy biscuit whatever it is the ribs and the pulled pork and then i got three sauces to choose from as well so i chose sticky garlic barbecue and carolina vinegar barbecue um i don't know okay this is the thing i might have ordered really hot sauce because i didn't know what like it was listed multiple times and i'm starting to think that these asterisks mean that's how spicy it is so maybe they got a kick to it which should be which should be fine um and then for slides i got coleslaw i mean i guess I'm, i just cannot right now coleslaw and of course mac and cheese and they gave me i think this is a a bonus because i didn't order dessert or bread or anything and it's i think it's texas toast yummy i love bread I don't know if the bread comes with this meal or if they threw it in as a bonus. Um, I actually didn't really look through the menu that deeply because I kind of put it in order um, hastily so that it came in time um, so that I could, you know, make it to my room in time and eat it because lunch is like an hour and a half long. So that's my meal and I'm going to enjoy this while I'm sitting in my call. I did want to do a quick update of the food. So the meat and the sauce, phenomenal. The only thing is the quality assurance of the packaged food has room for improvement. So I found a hair in my mac and cheese and it wasn't no short hair, it was a really long hair. I think it might have been even longer than my hair. Um, there was a pork rind in my pulled pork, which honestly I don't mind, it was like extra food. but that's not something I ordered and it wasn't any part of this meal um I also one quick comment about the coleslaw so I'm a total slaw girl I would say that just my personal preference this slaw was a bit too acidic and like tart for me so I just kind of wish maybe it was a little more of the creamy sweet side and less so tart 
other than that i would highly recommend you at least give it a try it is really good um the only thing is i would highly recommend that you eat it in store not only just to guarantee your quality but also having you know meats warm is ideal um the food did arrive when i mean at least when i picked it up uh, i picked it up like five minutes from a concierge desk or something like around there after they had dropped it off and it was, actually did feel warm still but it's just once you open it and then you sit for a little bit it, it does get pretty much cold um, so right now it's not even room temp anymore it's it's cold it doesn't help that i'm sitting uh right across from the vent that's blowing straight onto my food uh, but it still tastes delicious it does so hot or cold if it's this good um it's probably pretty good fresh it's officially over i'm sorry i'm chewing gum but the conference is over and we actually ended early and I'm about to bust a mission to the National History Museum, which is one of the Smithsonian Museums because they don't close at 5, they close at 5.30, so it's 3.50, I got this. my hair I just showered after a really long rainy day I didn't bring rain clothes because I got a little cocky I guess I was like if it rains I probably won't be outside anyway but I was wrong I was walking out there for like 30 plus minutes but luckily it wasn't pouring it was just you know drizzling a little bit so we're okay we got home we showered we got dinner we had fun and all of that jazz I feel like I should just take a moment to recap this trip it was my first work trip ever and as i mentioned it was meant to be kind of like this appreciation like the past three years has been crazy with our agency you know we went from getting 300 million dollar appropriations to 3 billion literally and then now we're just getting 1.6 billion more and this agency is growing i think we've taken on like a third more employees than we had before which is really big for the eda we're a small agency as a fairly new employee, I don't, I feel like I was getting a little bit more credit. I mean, we as in like the general, because you know, we were all getting thanked, but I've only been here one and a half years or so, and I've only really been there for half the time. So things were already kind of crazy when I got there. Things did indeed get crazier <laughs> while I was there, but uh, it did feel a little bit like I was getting s some credit for the, the, the setup that other people have done. What I will say though, is that I felt like a sense of inspiration and I felt like I've been more motivated to keep doing this kind of work because not only what did I feel like we were very appreciated you know by the big rigs here at the Capitol but that it's really setting in how important the work that we are doing is to the communities that we are helping I think in my line of work, it's very easy to feel like the tasks that I am doing are very mundane, you know, like I'm a glorified paper pusher, but it's because I'm thinking on a very like macro level, I guess. I'm seeing what's in front of me, but it's not every day that we get to go out in the field and we get to see the projects come to life. So it's harder for us to imagine like the impact 
of these projects and the only times that we really do get to understand impact is just through data and numbers. But what I do have to acknowledge is obviously at the end of the day, the data does tell a story, right? We're getting thousands of people jobs. We're helping universities open new research labs and opportunities for students to learn in STEM fields, especially in the medical field um, and other sciences so that they can advance their local economy, they can contribute back to their local economy, then their local community, especially in light of the pandemic when you know we were in need of more healthcare providers, we were in need of more technology, in need of more labs, in need of more assistance for small businesses that took a really large hit. And here I am pushing papers, yeah, but damn, like, the projects really are making an impact for these people. And those are just some of the things we do here. Like, I'm sure there are thousands of technical assistance programs that we also were able to contribute to and fund to help all of these uh, economies. Okay, I'm just rambling about my work at this point. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, I, I need to give myself more credit. I need to give this line of work more credit. And I, honestly, I need to give everyone a round of applause. Like we all need to give each other a round of applause because whether or not you feel like you are doing something or contributing to society, just know that you probably are in a way that you're not thinking. Um, sometimes it's not directly in front of you and it might be a large scale thing and you're just a small machine and all of that, but just know that without that cog, you probably can't finish the engine. So, you know, everyone round of applause. I don't know why I'm waving. <laughs> and without further ado, um, that's the end of my business trip. I'm flying out first thing in the morning tomorrow. And you know, this has been fun. This has been fun. I don't know if this is the format that I'd want to keep the vlogs. I'm kind of testing around right now if I want to do a speaking or if I just kind of want to do like an ASMR type of vlog where you follow me around, but maybe I'll subtitle everything. Sometimes I feel like that's a little better. I mean, it sets the mood, but it's also easier because in these conferences, I'm not comfortable going around like recording people, recording myself talking. It just doesn't seem professional and especially where I am right now physically and the type of people I'm around, I don't know if they'd appreciate me recording this and putting it on the internet. I don't really know if I'm violating any federal regulations by doing this. I'm gonna say no. I don't think I gave away any proprietary information or anything like that, but um, just to keep everyone so else safe, me safe, you know, you guys safe. Um, this is this is what we're gonna get so thank you for following on my journey and hopefully you'll stay um for for the rest of it <laughs> peace